This is a story I heard about a book called And Tango Makes Three. This is a book about gay penguins. Apparently this is a true story. This was about uh, these, these two male penguins in the um, zoo in, in New York, right? Uh, New York Central Park Zoo. <laughs> two male penguins named Roy and Silo. And they were observed trying to um, acting as a mating couple and they were trying to hatch a rock unsuccessfully of course so that is one of them would sit on the rock and warm it up and treat it like an egg trying to hatch it and they were given a fertilized egg which they warmed and hatched and then went and raised their little baby chick which they named Tango and that is an example of same-sex mating behavior found in nature see one thing that the anti-gay people the Christians the uh, MAGA chugs all chuds will always tell you is that uh, you know animals you know being gay is unnatural because animals don't exhibit gay behavior and that's not true not true at all it's been exhibited in many 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 different types of animals there's even some animals which have the ability to switch their sex such as certain types of frogs you know they can switch their their biological sex completely right so when they say that there's no precedence for this type of uh, for gay and trans behavior in nature that is not scientifically accurate so uh, basically somebody wrote a book called Antango Makes Three about these two gay penguins and it was like a kid's book and of course the conservative right wing has, are losing their minds over it this was a book this book of course and along with a lot of others have recently been banned in Florida and very many other places um, a couple of other ones there's a book called uh, I got it written down right here um, what was it all boys aren't blue that's another one <laughs> right and uh, so you've heard you've heard in, in Florida they have this bill you know don't say gay bill where you're not allowed to talk about sexuality or anything like that at all you're not allowed to mention any sexuality whatsoever however it seems to be specifically targeted towards non cisgendered non conservative like expressions of sexuality so it seems to be a-okay to mention uh, in history for example um, about you know X and X was so-and-so's wife or whatever but when it basically comes to anything that is not just you know heteronormative then the law kicks in so you've got uh, things like teachers and stuff like that like not being able to bring their their spouses to events <laughs> right because they have a same-sex spouse or not be able to put like their their uh, you know put their their photo of their spouse on their desk or like you know kids not being able to like have uh, you know gay clubs or whatever the straight pride club or something not being able to just talk about it whatsoever right and part of that law is that um, books books with sexually explicit content which may um, mention sexuality in any way whatsoever have to be removed from the shelves this is resulting in many librarians there school librarians just shutting down libraries completely right and I came across this video here speaking of these book bans right because I was reading this article about the uh, and tango makes three book right which is you know if you're gonna ban a book it's like the most innocent fucking thing it's a kids book about penguins it's a true story right and you know I don't like like how can anybody think that their like sexuality would be challenged by a kid's book about penguins 
right? <laughs> it's kind of the dumbest fucking thing ever if you think about it. It's like, there's lots of other things out there that'll challenge your sexuality. Like, why a, a, peng, a, kid's, a kid's book that, like, no one's gonna fucking read anyway? <laughs> Right, like I mean, it's it's like a book for very small children, you know, three, four, five. They're not gonna understand any of this stuff anyway to begin with. So it's like, but whatever. So I found this. Uh, I found this list. So so this book, along with um, lots of other ones, right, are being challenged by a teacher. Um, Here's the list right here. Uh, her name is Vicky Baggett, um, who her students have claimed. So she's a teacher in um, it is the uh, school district is I've got it written right here, Escambia County. It's near Pensacola, Florida, right? And uh, she is a very openly racist and homophobic person uh, I will put this article I'm not going to read this article here but um, I'll just put this down actually you know what we could read it yeah why don't we read it let me just bring this over here we'll spend a few a few minutes going through this article this is let's just make that bigger okay popular info right I'll put this down in the uh, chat for you guys if you want to see what we're reading Florida English teacher pushing book bans is openly racist and homophobic homophobic students allege Vicki Baggett English teacher at Northview High School in Florida in Escambia County is pushing to remove nearly 150 books from school libraries right in an interview last month, Baggett told Popular Information she's challenging books like When Wilma Rudolph Played Basketball, story of a sprinter who overcame racial discrimination to become an Olympic champion because she's concerned the book could make white students feel uncomfortable. Baggett said she has a responsibility to protect minors from this kind of content. So you can kind of just see right off the bat who this person is. It's like, you know... Here's a, a, a book <clears throat> with a black protagonist. I don't know why that would make white people feel uncomfortable. I never really got that angle, you know? It's like, why, you know? Because you, you hear that angle a lot from conservatives and, and, you know, sort of racist and things where they say, like, well, we don't want to bring up, we don't want to talk about the origins of slavery, for example, because... It may make white students feel uncomfortable. Make make them feel like they're they're responsible for this legacy and and you know that they caused slavery. And it's like I never got that. You know when you when you go and you learn about slavery, nobody like in you know in history class, right? Nobody ever ever has tried, as far as I can remember or have ever seen, nobody ever says the the current people who are alive today <laughs> are responsible for what happened you know hundreds of years ago right nobody ever says that okay and that's not what the implication is i don't know why i don't know why that where that line of attack even comes from right it's like kind of hearing like hey if my great grandfather murdered somebody then somebody would call me a murderer. It's like, what the fuck? It's my great-grandfather. I don't even know his name, for crying out loud. I don't even know what my great-grandfather's names were. <laughs> Any of them, really. You know, like, and people that I've never met that lived, you know, 100 years, 200 years or whatever, before I was even born. How the fuck are you supposed to be responsible for them? Nobody would, no rational person would say that, right? Now, there is a discussion about the perpetuating the legacy of slavery and that's a different discussion you know when you talk about things like um institutional racism that is a different discussion but that's not what we're talking about here so why would it make white people white kids feel uncomfortable right and here's the other thing maybe they should feel uncomfortable right maybe they should feel like hey well this was wrong 
you know, maybe that will kind of, you know, help them to make good choices in the future with who they vote for to make sure stuff like this doesn't happen again, you know, <laughs> right? But no, that's, uh, that's the thing, you know, she just, this is another, another example where they say that they're just trying to protect the children when in real life it's, you know, no, they're trying to, you know, um, perpetuate an agenda, you know, a agenda of white supremacy. That's basically what it is. Okay, um, and then anyway, this goes on to say, oh, you know what, fuck off. Okay, this goes on to say, uh, you know, that she was, this teacher is against things like uh, race mixing, you know. Peggy Sunday graduated from Northview in 2021, told popular information that during a 10th grade English, English class, Baggett said she opposed interracial marriage. Baggett said in the Bible somewhere it says that it's a sin for races to mix together and that whites are meant to be with whites and blacks are meant to be with blacks. Yep. There you go, folks. Presley said that Baggett said she was opposed to race mixing because she wanted to preserve cultures, didn't want everyone to turn the same color eventually. Right. So, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, woman's against race mixing. She's openly racist. Right. Uh, you know, here's another one. Sunday said Baggett is known throughout Northview as an openly racist teacher. Sunday worked at a local pool. One day, Baggett asked her about the black to white ratio. According to Sunday, Baggett then asked two black students if they knew how to swim because most, ple most black people don't know how to swim. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, we can turn this off for now. But you get the idea, you know, Check out the article yourselves. Essentially, this woman is out and out racist. She's the one challenging all of these books, right? Here's a list of the some of the books that she wants to ban. I'll put this down in the chat for you guys, too. It's a nice Google spreadsheet. We don't really need to read from this, but if you want to check it out yourselves, there it is. <laughs> So among the list of things that this woman wants to ban, right, along with uh, Tango Makes Three and uh, some others, I, I, went, I went through it, found a couple of, of books I thought were worth mentioning here. So one of them, actually, you know what we need to do here? We need to get this color right here. Hang on a second, folks. That color, sort of salmon color. All right. So among some of the books that this woman wants to ban is a book called Go Ask Alice, which is actually one that I've read years and years ago. It's uh, about a girl that develops a drug addiction and ends up going around and doing lots of crazy stuff, written in, uh, I think it was 1970, right? And it's actually a very... It has a very strong anti-drug message, right? It's uh, the thing about Go Ass Alex. Yeah, it's it's like about a girl like she ends up being a heroin addict, like getting dosed with LSD and like, you know, raped and stuff like that. And it's a very very anti-drug message. It, it ends with her trying to stay away from drugs and being clean and wanting to like start a family and be a normal person and stuff. You know what? That's not the right color. We should actually do this purple. There we go. Right. Which is funny why this woman would want to ban that, why she would want to keep that away from children. I mean, don't you think that you would want kids to read a book about why it's bad to take drugs, right? When Go Ask Alex came out back in 19... Uh, go, go Ask Alice, right? When that came out in like 1970, right? It was kind of a huge sensation, and school libraries were, like, trying to stock it, right? Like, I read a little bit up on this. Like, it was, like, so popular that they couldn't print enough books, and they people wanted their kids to read it, because it had a very, very anti-drug message, right? <laughs> and now, you know, 50 years later... You know, people are fucking trying to ban this book. Kind of fucking ridiculous. Another one, Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. She wants to ban that. 
If you guys ever read Slaughterhouse Five, it's a very uh, anti-war. It's got a very anti-war message. Kind of a world-famous book there. Stamped from the beginning, a definitive history of racist ideals in, Amer in America. Right? Of course, it's a book that teaches that racism is wrong and the history of racism. So, of course, a racist teacher would not want that being uh, taught to children. Right? Wicked, the life and times of the Wicked Witch of the West. She wants to ban that. I don't know why. I've never read the book, per se. I saw the play, actually. I went and saw the play. It's, what's the hell the wrong with with Wicked? Like, I mean, there's not, like, any sex in it or anything, <laughs> right? I guess this woman really likes, uh, really likes the Wizard of Oz or whatever. Wicked is, like, family-friendly. I mean, yeah, okay, there's some, like, death and stuff in it, but it's nothing that I wouldn't hide from a 12-year-old. <laughs> kind of fucking stupid. This one really got me. The Manga Assassination Classroom is on that list of things to be banned. Assassination Classroom, right? If you guys have not, if you've ever heard of Assassination Classroom, they made an anime of it. It's actually really good. It's really funny. It's about an, an alien that comes to Earth who is unstoppable. An alien who will destroy the planet in one year and the only way that he capitulates to being stopped is that a he's training a class of assassins and then their final test is that they have to kill him <laughs> right and it's like really good really the anime is really good it's actually funny right i mean it's sort of that usual high school Japanese sort of anime with this twist of a killer alien that the children are trying to murder. Like, why the hell would she... Like, it's a fucking manga for Christ's sake. There's, here's the thing about it, right? There are no gay characters. There are no black characters. They're all Japanese. There are, you know, no trans kids in it. So the teacher even goes out of his way to save the kids' lives and stuff. I mean, why did she want to ban that? Because it's violent? When was the last time Christians gave a fuck about violence? Like, I mean, I don't know, what, maybe because it uh, has some kind of vague connection to violence in schools and school shootings or something? You know, I mean, that's the thing about all of this stuff, right? When you go to this, this type of censorship, like, when does that shit end? You know, who gets to decide what's too risque for the kids and who isn't? And what isn't? You know? Something that I may think is absolutely fine, assassination classroom. I would, I would think that's absolutely fine for teenagers. I wouldn't let a five-year-old kid read it. But here's the thing: a five-year-old kid wouldn't be able to understand it in the first place. You know, like if you got like something like that, or something like Slaughterhouse Five, and you like had that in a, you know, and a kid went to read that, like a five year five six seven year old kid they would have no interest in those things right and they wouldn't be able to understand it in the first place it's way over their head they they could read it 50 times and it wouldn't make any sense to them right so it's like no you have you know the appropriate age group is like teenagers for those things why would you not want teenagers reading an anti-war book why would you not want teenagers reading a book about with an anti-drug message Right. The the message of assassination classroom is ultimately teamwork. Because that's how they finally prevail. They they have to work together. Teamwork. Why isn't that a good value you want to pass on to your kid? <laughs> right? It's like teamwork to save the human race. Like they have to kill this alien to like stop him from blowing up the world. Like, isn't that a good thing? Don't you want your kids to work together to save the world? <laughs> right? Like, who makes this decision? What, some fucking bitch-ass racist teacher in the in bumfuck middle of nowhere Florida? She gets to make these fucking decisions? Why? You know? Because she's a Christian. That's what it comes down to, folks. They have taken it upon themselves to be the moral arbiters 
of what everybody else gets to believe right and if we don't if we don't line up with what they determine is the acceptable belief then they'll crush you they'll throw you in jail they'll give you the death penalty right <laughs> this is why you can't allow you know you can't allow these people to take over right in just even small little ways like this this is why they like even the the smallest amount of power of power they shouldn't be allowed to have a fucking school board for crying out loud that is like the smallest amount of like political power that you can get i mean i guess you could always run for dog catcher or something and even there even 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 these in that like little tiny office these people are abusing their power forcing their will on everybody else right it's shouldn't be allowed you know this is why you need to fight back at every level you know you don't just turn out every four years to vote for president you know turn out every election vote in every election vote for every office you know there's some people that do that they'll come in they'll vote for their senators or vote for their president the president and then they'll just skip everything else because i don't know this person is they just skip it right don't do that don't do that right <laughs> vote for every office every election you know because it counts it counts at every every single step of the way it counts your local school boards right your city council your state representative your governor your mayors all of them <laughs> they all have impacts on your life and they can change things in ways that you're not even aware of you know how many people out there once they ban all these books how many people out there send their kids to school and they just have no idea that that even happened at all you know and then you wonder why like kids start listening to fucking andrew tate and shit like that <laughs> you know because you know it, it ultimately this this sort of censorship leaves a vacuum right an information vacuum which the right wing is all too ready to exploit you know you have things like the daily wire creating content for kids stuff like that right prager you creating content for kids pretty sure that uh they would allow those things in the classroom pretty sure if ben shapiro wrote a fucking children's book that book would be allowed to be in the fucking library right nobody's gonna ban his stupid fucking shit you know and then you know then you wonder you wonder why uh trans kids are like you know commit suicide at higher numbers right maybe it's because they're being bullied all the fucking time because we removed all the all the books that said that trans kids were good got banned from the library you know or that say that it's okay to be uh to be trans and be gay and to be different and to not be uh not conform all the books that uh encouraged an open viewpoint and uh independent thinking all got taken away hello folks if you like what i do and you want to support the channel please consider buying something from my sd shop supporting me on patreon liking and subscribing and checking me out across my social media links listed below thank you all so much and see you next time